In our last video, we were able to combine sum and sequence those two functions on the calculator to build a signed area finding machine uh, where this represented the area. We had to specify the variable. We had a start and a stop point, and we had a rectangle width. And the stop point, of course, reflects the fact that we're doing a left Riemann sum. It's probably worth a moment for you to think about what it would take to change this function so that it would give a right Riemann sum or a midpoint Riemann sum. So I'll let you pause this and then we'll come back. Here are the answers for the midpoint and right Riemann sum. Notice that we only have to change the start and stop points. Rectangular width is the same. The calculation of area is the same. So we have a kind of a nice little machine that can handle our uh, area finding requirements. And for example, when we worked on this parabola from 0 to 4, we came up with an area of 21.254. when we used a width of 0.01. You might think, well, that's pretty accurate. But the real problem that we have is that we have no way of knowing whether this machine is actually giving us the correct areas under the curve. Uh, and that's because we don't know what the, what the quote correct close quote answer is to this particular integral. So the real question becomes, how do we test to see whether this whole contraption actually does what we expect it to do? So I'd like you to think about that for a second and then go on. Well, what I'd like to suggest is that if we were to choose examples of shapes where we know the area, then we can test our signed area finding machine against those shapes and see how accurate they are in giving us the right answers. So the first shape that we've chosen is simply y equals x. It gives us a triangle. It's easy to see that the area under that uh, line gives us a triangle of area 4 times 4 times a half. So the answer should be 8. And when we try it, here's what we get. Well, when we try um, 0.5, we get a value of 7. When we try 0.1, we get a value of 7.8. And when we try 0.01, we get a value of 7.98. Well, we kind of like that. Um, it seems to be heading towards 8, and so we should feel good about that. The, the problem, of course, is the shape is such a simple one, it's hard to know whether our system really works for arbitrary curves. And that's why I like the idea of testing this circle that I've shown below. Finding the area of that circle uh, would have to deal with all the curves in the circle and we could see if our signed area finding machine was really doing its job. So what I've done is um, just remind you that x squared plus y squared equals r squared is the equation for a circle and the reason that we need that is that we need to plot this top line. We have to understand um, what to put in for our y1 equation to cover this curve. And I'm only choosing a portion of the curve, and here's why. I'm just going to choose this top part. So first we're going to solve for y. We get plus or minus square root of 4 minus x squared, but because we're only interested in the top half, um, we're going to use the positive sign in front of the square root. Now what's the area of this circle? Well, if you go from if you have a circle of radius 2, 
then pi r squared is the area, so the area would be 4 pi. That means also that the area of just this quadrant would be precisely pi. And so if we can find the signed area from 0 to 2 using this curve as our y1, again this curve here, as our y1, then we know that the result we should get is pi. Again, our start and stop points of integration are going to be 0 to 2. So what do we, in fact, get? Well, let's take a look. Uh, when you choose uh, 0.5, the value that you get is 3.495. Well, that's not very good, but at least in the right ballpark. When you choose 0.1, you get 3.228. When you choose 0.01, you get 3.151. Well, that's headed in the right direction. It would be nice if it were a little more precise. The problem is, and I haven't mentioned this before, but if you go to a size of, say, 0.001, the calculator simply runs out of memory and, and can't handle the calculation. So again, what we have is that the process seems to work in principle, but we'd like it to be even more accurate with even finer rectangle uh, without breaking the memory. And in fact, there is a way to do that. And that is, there's an entire uh, function that is built in that I haven't told you about yet. And it's called FNINT. When you use the calculator, you can select it by choosing Math 9, and you'll get one of two displays, you'll, depending on the version of the calculator that you have that shows this FNINT, where you can guess what the numbers are that I'm putting in. Or you'll get this display that looks more like the signed area, where these little dotted areas simply represent uh, blanks that you fill in in succession. Okay. It's fairly easy to see the comparison between the function that we've hand built, purpose of y1, the 0, the 4, and the variable being x, how it corresponds to the math 9 function finint. Notice the one thing that's missing in both of these representations, namely the width of the rectangle. And that's because the system keeps shrinking this rectangle width automatically until it gets a stable answer, a very convenient feature of this uh, machine. And so what do we get when we actually run FNINT rather than this system? Well, when we run FNINT, for the triangle problem, we get exactly 8. And when we run it for the circle, we get 3.141592. And uh, that's about where it ends. So what happens is we got a result that is about a thousand times more accurate in our calculation of pi than our hand-built machine. And so while it's been a great exercise to go through building this machine, because I hope it's helped you really think through what left-hand Riemann, right-hand Riemann, midpoint Riemann, and so forth are, from here on out, we're just going to use the built-in FNINT function. Let's see if we can't recap. Uh, it's very easy to reconfigure our area finding machine for right and midpoint Riemann sums. And we decided to use known shapes to confirm that, in fact, our machine is giving us accurate results, results that seem to get better as we increase the number of rectangles and decrease the width of each rectangle. And finally, the built-in function, which you can find with Math 9, known as FNINT, in either this representation up here or in this representation on your calculator, allows you to do all of these 
signed area numerical approximations almost instantaneously and with very high accuracy. Again, that pi calculation, if you think about it, that's accurate to a part in about 3 million. You could probably go to the moon with that accuracy and not miss it. Again, I want to encourage you to go through the calculations that I've outlined here in this video. I think by having to switch back and forth uh, between left, right, midpoint Riemann sum, for example, or changing the width of the rectangle to reproduce the results, putting in new, f new y1 functions, I think only by walking through that, uh, even though it might feel a little bit cumbersome, will you really cement your understanding of how these Riemann sum approximations give us the values that they do.